What was the plan before you learned my my system and program and methodology, which we're going to unpack here in just a minute? You, you you moved to your new market. What were what was your mindset? What was your plan to go out there and get for sale by owner listings? What were you going to try before you, you changed that methodology? My previous method for for sale by owners was uh, I would call them and say, I assume you're selling yourself in order to save commission. What if I could show you how I can net you more money even after my commission is paid and get your home sold for you? And uh, there was always just a lot of doubt, a lot of a lot of pushback with that. And that script just doesn't just doesn't work. It's not going to work here. Walk the audience through, you know, what were some of the things after going through our program that you changed that you're finding more success with now? The reverse selling strategies are fantastic. It, it disarms the, the the prospect while you're on the phone. They do not feel under threat. They feel like you're having a conversation and you're, you're reinforcing them. So there are several things that you strategically put in, like. Welcome back. With me today, I've got another one of our For Sale by Owner students with me. I've got Josh Shelton. Josh, welcome, man. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Yeah, look forward to, been looking forward to it for a while. Appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, before we jump really into uh, too much of the interview, what market are you in? So I am in Northeast Texas. Uh, so if you look at the Metroplex, DFW Metroplex, um, that's that's our, our MLS in our area. Uh, it's quite a big MLS, so uh, it, it's pretty massive. Good. How, how many agents are in your marketplace, would you say? Uh, it's probably three to 5,000. Okay, good. So it's a good size market. So good for you. And how long you've been selling real estate down there? So I was uh, in Louisiana for seven years selling real estate, and then I relocated to Texas, um, and I had plans of doing real estate and oil and gas, and uh, oil and gas took took a, a beating this year. So um, yeah. I was forced to go all in on real estate, where I was trying to do a little bit of both. Got it, got it. So so this is really your first full year in the business, is that right? That's right. Wow. Okay. Got it. And so, you know, typically I will interview uh, members that are in our coaching program. Uh, you, you have access to our online course only. You're actually not even in our coaching program at this time. Is that correct? That's, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Very, very cool. And what excited me to uh, have Ron from my team reach out is because I understand you're getting some great results. What has been your experience and your results with the program so far? And then we can kind of unpack that for the audience and walk them through how you're how you're getting these results. Okay, so uh, if we go back, I believe I believe I signed up for the program uh, third week of July. Okay, and it took me about two weeks to get everything ready. So I was practicing scripts and and getting getting ready, going through the going through your your material, setting up banner season and. Um, I believe the second week of August, I started setting appointments and I went on, I think 16 previews in that four week period. And on the fourth week, I think I got three listings on that week that ended up just kind of coming simultaneously. And I kept doing the previews, uh, going on a lot of previews. And, and so my area, uh, it would take me about an hour and a half to get there. Yeah, I would be there for 30 minutes and it would take me an hour and a half to get back. So we were talking four hour round trip previews. It was taking a long time, but I did total. I looked on my CRM today. I did 35 previews and I listed 13 of, of those. That's that's phenomenal. Right. I mean, because, you know, in in um, in my program, I talk about the, the FISBO conversion funnel and you're, you're converting even higher than our averages which is super, super exciting. So you were able to go and meet with 35 for sale by owners and get 13 for sale by owner listings in the past, essentially four months. Is that right? Pretty much. Yeah. I think you got to give it a little grace there at the beginning because I was getting set up and uh, that was my first, my first contracts as well. So, um, you know, I, I'm experienced in Louisiana, so I've done it for a while, but the, there's a few different things in Texas that took me some time that, forced me to kind of slow down as I had I, the three deals that I got, they all went under contract the first week. Mm. So uh, I, I was underwater there for a little while. So it, it slowed me down. So, so, so Josh, I mean, that's incredible, right? I mean, um, because not only did you get these results we're talking about, you make a great point. 
you are in a brand new market. Did, did you know anything about this market before you, before you started selling real estate there? No, no, I had, I jumped in. So basically I had to replace all of my income. And, uh, and so I was looking for a way to just to jump in and, and go quickly. And then I wasn't sure if your program was going to work, honestly, I was just, it, it seemed like, it seemed like, uh, the best thing that I'd seen for a market this competitive. Yeah. And we're going to unpack that for the whole interview. And, and I just want to set that, that groundwork for, for the people watching this. You, you're a brand new agent in your first year. You move to a brand new market. And in the first four or five months, you go and meet with 35 for sale by owners. You come out there with 13 listings. Phenomenal job. So, so let's jump right into it and kind of unpack how you were able to do that. First and foremost, you know, uh, how did you actually learn about what it is that I do? Uh, I had a friend of mine. Um, his name is Stan Lewis. He um, he used to help me. Um, we used to call a lot of for sale owners back in Louisiana, and mm -hmm. um, he's he's been in the business for thirty years. And uh, he told me I should go check out one of your videos when I told him I was working on a for sale owner program as I was trying to develop my own strategies. So I I got on the YouTube, I watched it, and then I saw the coaching program and. Uh, and the, the online classes that you, that you offered. And, uh, so I watched probably five or six videos. I used the script that I heard you use. I set two appointments in two calls using the preview script, the 1.0. And, uh, and then I thought I, I need to learn more about this. So. Got it. Got it. All right. Very cool. And so how long was it before what I'm always curious to know, Josh, how long were you trying to go after for sale by owners before you joined uh, my my training program, uh, if we take Louisiana out, probably yeah. two weeks. All right. we so two weeks. Now, what was the plan before you learned my my system and program and methodology, which we're going to unpack here in just a minute? You, you you moved to your new market. What were what was your mindset? What was your plan to go out there and get for sale by owner listings? What were you going to try before you changed that methodology? So my previous method for for sale by owners was uh, I would call them and say, I assume you're selling yourself in order to save commission. What if I could show you how I can net you more money even after my commission is paid and get your home sold for you? And uh, there was always just a lot of doubt, a lot of, a lot of pushback with that. And, um, you know, I, I had success doing that where I was, but I was in a small market. They're getting 25, 30 phone calls from realtors now. And that script just doesn't, just doesn't work. It's yeah. not going to work here. So, so that makes a lot of sense because a lot of people are trying that. I mean, myself included, I grew up in the industry for the first four or five years, Josh, I, I was doing essentially a, a, a version of that approach. And you're right. I mean, the prospects no longer respond to that type of communication. So walk the audience through, you know, what were some of the things after going through our program that you change that you're finding more success with now? Um, the reverse selling strategies are fantastic. Uh, they, it, it disarms the, the, the prospect while you're on the phone. They do not feel under threat. They feel like you're having a conversation and you're, you're reinforcing them. So there are several things that you strategically put in, like, I'm sure that you're going to have success selling the home, but so that, it, it, it helps them to be more at ease. Oops, sorry. No worries. Helps them to be a little bit more at ease. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, and it disarms them. Um, Absolutely. That that's one thing. And then um, the whole concept of trying to get face to face because that's a game changer. Um, I sort of knew that it was. I, I was just under the impression I used to be under the impression that if I go and I meet with them and it's under the pretense of bringing a buyer and I fail to bring a buyer in their mind, I've already failed to sell it once. Mm. So I was very nervous about setting myself up for that, if that makes sense. So one of the things that in the mindset was you changed the way I, I looked at that. I wasn't going there just to bring a buyer. I was going to go there to see if I could help them sell their home themselves. That's right. Going through with that mindset helped me to, um, I guess, get over that, that hurdle that I had mentally because I didn't want to go in and fail to bring a buyer and then think that, you know, start off with a failure, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. And, and you probably, that's the thing I think a lot of people um, misunderstand about what it is that I teach. You know, you don't want to feel like the bait and switch. Like you use this script and, and the first sale, I thought you're bringing a buyer. You don't bring a buyer. It's all weird. You, you don't want to start off the relationship that way, which you know, um, is not what I teach, right? I, I teach you how to set a face-to-face -face appointment with a for sale by owner, setting good expectations. So, so, so that makes sense. You said, so uh, two big things so far, you learn how to um, communicate with a for sale by owner where they don't feel threatened or pressured from you. So therefore it's a lot easier for you to set a face-to-face -face appointment. Is that right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Make, makes a ton of sense. Now. So your first couple of months, you get out there, you set 35, you go on 35 face-to-face -face appointments, you know, walk the audience through what those appointments are like. What do you focus on? How do they go? What do you bring? What do you say? Give us a high level understanding of that face-to-face -face FISBO preview appointment. Okay. So I, I modified it uh, a touch from what you did, but I did, I printed out their Zillow uh, photo um, so I would put that on a card stock photo and sure. then I would print out comps that would just be on a uh, just regular piece of paper. So I'd have a set of comps. I'd have their Zillow photo and, uh, I would pay attention to what they've done well and what they haven't done well. And then, uh, I would, I would go and, um, sometimes I would drive around the neighborhood for just a few minutes just to see what all is there. And, um, and when I, once I got to the home, uh, the first thing I would do is I'd introduce myself and I would ask them, you know, if it's okay, if I took a look around, there's been a little bit of COVID craziness. So some people were a little more nervous and um, some people were a little less, but um, so I, I would take a look around at the property. And then usually after I've talked to them, I built some rapport for a little while. I would start giving them some tips. I would, have you tried this um, on the Zillow profile? I noticed this during this COVID time, there, here's some things you can do to try to help sell the home. I would just give them some tips about things they could do. And I was following script 1.0. So um, I would say out of those 35, 20 of them, I hit them with the 30, 60, 90. You know, you go 30, 60, 90 days. The other ones, I didn't feel like, I felt like, uh, I don't, I feel like the appointments didn't really go that well. Sure. Uh, so I, I, I just kind of sensed that this would probably have put a bad taste in their mouth. So I didn't do it. Yep. probably should have just went for it, but, um, but I didn't. So uh, out of the, so out of the 35, I probably dropped that 30, 60, 90 line on them about, about on about 20 of them. And, uh, and just so people know what that is, I would basically say, uh, after I finished giving them all these tips, look, you go X amount of time and it hadn't sold. Um, you have a backup plan, but they'd say, no, I'd say, I would love to share with you my backup plan. Uh, tell you what, I'll send it over in the mail. You take a look at it and then I'll, I'll just follow it with you and touch base and see how things are going. And then they'd say, yeah, that's great. And a lot of times, you know, yep. three weeks in, they would get that. And out of the 20 that I told it to 13 of them listed. So, I mean, they were, I mean, that's were, huge. That's I mean, big, that's big number. So, yeah. So, so let's look at that. I mean, so, so for, for all of you that are watching this, listen to what Josh just said. 20 of the for sale by owners that he met with, he asked our qualifying question, which is what we teach all of our students to do, which sounds exactly like Josh said, listen, if 30, 60, 90 days goes by and you're unsuccessful selling the house, would you consider meeting with me and looking at my for sale by owner backup plan? Well, more times than not, when you're at that face-to-face -face appointment, the for sale by owner is pretty open to that idea because you're not pressuring them to do anything today. Would you agree? That's right. Yeah. You're putting them down so there. They're disarmed. Yeah. They're disarmed. You've got rapport with them. You're opening this relationship. So they say, sure, Josh, no problem. Send it on over to me. 13, 13. So more than 50%. I actually want to see what that actual ratio is, but more than, more than 15. What is that? So uh, you got uh, 65% of them not only said yes, but they took you up on your offer and you listed the property. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Awesome. Now, so, 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 so far we've talked about step one, which is setting for sale by owner appointments. We talked about step two, which is how that face-to-face -face appointment should go. Now the follow-up. So talk to us about what you're doing to follow up with for sale by owners. That's allowing you to stay top of mind to win these listings long-term. Okay. So, um, 
I honestly, if I would have been, if I would have been more comfortable with everything, I would have gotten more because in the follow-up, I was going on so many of these preview appointments that were taking four to five hours, even each appointment. It was just, it was, it was eating my whole afternoon just to do one. Yeah. Uh, so there were several where I actually missed out on because they ended up listing with someone and I didn't follow up with them well enough. So that being said, what I would do was I would, I, I took uh, your method, try to call them back Monday. Yeah. So Mondays I would typically call them back um, after my lead gen session in the morning between 11 and one, I would try to call all the for sale owners back. Then I would send them banner season. I tried to do the target, the target targeted audience on Facebook, but Facebook has rules where they're not allowing me to do it right now. So I yep. tried, they, they won't allow it. Um, so I wasn't able to do that. I did not do any email. I'm still looking mm -hmm. at it. So I got so busy at, at one point I was like, I'll, I'm gonna come back set the bomb bomb videos up probably over the holidays this year. Yeah and then set them up on that. So I didn't do any emails. So basically it was a phone call, banner season. Were you texting them every week or, you know, were you texting them here and there? I, I, I was, it depends on how the conversation went. Right. So if I had a conversation with them Monday and we actually talked, I may not send a text Thursday. If right. I talked to them and they were busy at work or something like that, I wouldn't call them back. I would just send them a text. Got it. You know, maybe the next day. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I did, I did engage with them every week. Um, the ones that I, that I met with and uh, I stayed in touch with them and banner season, uh, they were getting postcards and I would even call and say, Hey, just want to check, make sure you got it. Cause I was sending gigas to every one of these. Sure. Uh, to all of them. So um, Love and, it, man. That's cool. go ahead. Go ahead. I'm about to say one of them uh, went with me. Uh, she said no to the preview. I stopped by the open house anyway. Yeah. And just said, Hey, hello. Want to drop off some helpful tips that'll help you sell put them on the postcards. And honestly, I was a little nervous that I made her mad. So I just put her on postcards and I didn't call her back for four weeks. I called her back on the fourth week. She said, yeah, I got your postcards. I was planning on calling you tomorrow. And mm. she listed. Um, so uh, it's, phenomenal. it's phenomenal. Now, what would you say to the people that argue the other side of this? Right. So, so let me give you the argument that I hear Josh a lot. There's another group of people that, that say, Brandon, that, that methodology is, is, is not going to work. It's a waste of time and you're working for free. You're going to go there and help the for sale by owners sell on their own. Are you kidding? What would you say to those people that don't maybe understand the methodology and make that argument? Yeah. So I've, I've thought, I've thought about it. Honestly, um, honestly, I've, I've found that the way the world works, if you're sincerely trying to come from a place where you're you're wanting to try to help people and giving them good information and, and sincerely being helpful, um, people like that, people that make a lifestyle of that, typically don't end up in poverty. Typically, yeah. mm. that sort of thing generates, a, a, I guess, a positive momentum in their life financially and wealth. Uh, it's usually the the opposite that happens. So the people that are afraid of doing that, that don't want to waste so much time, sometimes not, but sometimes sure. those are the people that end up moving in the wrong direction because it, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if you'd call it the law of the harvest or just trying to be helpful. It just causes good things to come back typically. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes sense. I think what you're saying too is really, really, I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is how I explain it. There's a couple of things happening, Josh, and I want to see if you agree. First and foremost, a for sale by owner or an expired listing or any lead for that matter is used to so many agents calling them, harassing them, pressuring them to do a whole bunch of different things. So first and foremost, when we call and we take this different approach, it's called a pattern interrupt. The consumer is taken aback and they don't know how to respond. So their defenses automatically get lowered. Now we go there. And then yet again, they're, they're kind of like, wow, I can't believe this guy's so nice. This girl's so nice. Then we go to the appointment. We start giving them tips. We start building that relationship. We're not pressuring them to sell their house. We start to build that relationship. And it's the law of reciprocity. What happens, this is what that law states. If the for sale by owner cannot sell on their own, we have automatically placed ourselves in their mind as their obvious choice. Why? Well, we were the only agent in town that wasn't pressuring them. So when they need help, certainly to your point, they're going to reach out for help. Would you, would you kind of, would, would you agree with that uh, explanation? 
Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that's probably what happened. Uh, that it, there for them, there was probably only one agent in their mind. Most of them that when they thought about who that they would want to help them get it sold, they probably went with whoever was most helpful. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. So, so tell me now that you have this new methodology and this new strategy, I got a couple questions left. What are your goals for 2021? What do you think now is possible now that you really learned this new reverse selling methodology? Well, um, I have had to deal with going on the previews. I, I've, I'm definitely transitioning to the um, 2.0 script. Yeah. Um, so I, I used it uh, last week. I called 10 FISBOs and I set three appointments. Um, got one of those uh, uh, said they were listing. Uh, they haven't signed anything yet. So I got one. The other one is said four weeks down the road that they'd want to because, um, you know, 30 days down the road is usually when they're going to list, but they, they met and it wasn't under the pretense of a preview. So I didn't go on eight, I only went on three. So I was able to call more expireds. I was able to get more expired leads, build more of a pipeline and do what I think's probably more productive activity. And I'm going to test that out because I think it'll work better, but it's hard to argue with, you know, 35 previews and 13 listings. So I might end up reverting back to yeah. doing the other method, but I think, I think the 2.0 method will work. I called, I called eight today. Three answered, set one appointment uh, with the 2.0 script. Um, so my, my goal next year is I would like to I would like to list 40 for sale by owners, and I would like to list 12 to 15 expireds. And I, I've been calling the absentees, so I listed two absentees so far uh, this year as well. Love it. The problem with those is, is that they didn't sell. They were they were a little harder, harder to sell. So, but they, they were good leads though. I, I'm, I'm not, not complaining. So I'm continuing to work on them. I would like to list, you know, five to eight of those. I haven't called a single for rent by owner. I've been mm -hmm. watching your Friday deal. So I, I, I need to add those in. Um, Cause that seems like a really good lead source as well. So overall, I would like to list about 60 to 70 homes next year. If I could do that, I would be, uh, I would be ecstatic. That, that, that is, that is absolutely phenomenal, Josh. Second year in the business, 60, 70 listings. That's phenomenal. What kind of income would that produce for you roughly? So uh, one of the, one of the challenges, so like with an expired listing, um, when you list those, we're seeing a lot of, it's not really that competitive on the, on the commission. So you can get what I would say is full commissions yeah. for sale by owners. I don't know if in your market, if you have these uh, discount brokers, when I say discount brokers, there's probably 50 of them sending postcards and they're hammering these for sale by owners with $99 put on MLS, $500 flat fees. There's so much. So it's, it's tough. Uh, so I'm, I'm not making as much per for sale by owner as I am per expired. Sure. Uh, but so I would say if I was to get 60 to 70, we're probably talking 250,000 um, next year, uh, GCI. I love it. I love it. So I guess my last question for you is, you know, if there's an agent watching this, okay, they believe, Josh, that direct prospecting over the phone, they know they've got to do it, okay? But they're getting all these conflicting messages from YouTube people, right? Some are saying use high pressure. Some are saying do this. Some are saying do that. What advice would you give them now knowing what you know? Um, if you had to start all over again, what would be some advice you'd give yourself and all the new agents that might be watching this in the future? Uh, I think I would say um, don't spend too much time uh, trying to come up with different strategies. I would say pick one to two lead sources. Um, don't, don't really skimp on the, on the, the data side. I, I, I try to go a little cheaper on the data, end up going with Vulcan 7 after a little while. Um, in the long term, I, if you can afford it, I mean, you, you need to have, you need to be able to prospect continuously for these blocks of time to people that have legitimate numbers, you know? So I, I um, if I could go back and start it over, I would just hammer for sale by owners, absentees, expires, and for rent by owners. And I would have stopped focusing on website, on buyers. I would have shut everything down except for that, just that's it. And I would have done that only for, uh, for the first four or six months. Cause I actually invested in a, in a, in a website that may actually be converting here pretty soon, but yeah. it took time and I could have done more, I think more productive stuff. 
I love it. That's great. That, that's great advice, right? Anytime I, I work with a brand new agent, that's why I tell them is focus on for sell by owners, for rent by owners, expires, absentee owners, and you'll be in really, really good shape. So, so that's really cool. And then the last thing I would guess I'd give you is you're right. When you start switching the strategy from 1.0 to 2.0, start to really track that. But I think what you'll find over time is you may set less appointments, but your conversions will be higher because those quality of appointments will be a lot better. Mm -hmm. and, and I think your sum game will probably be the same, uh, but you'll be going a lot less face-to-face -face appointments, saving you tons of time, allowing yeah. you to take more listings. So Josh, man, this has been great. Hopefully a lot of you guys got value out of this, this video. Thank you so much for, uh, for doing this, Josh. And, and I'm excited to watch you grow this business in, in 2021. Any, any last words of, of motivation that you could leave our, our viewers? Well, I think, I think we are, um, I think that, you know, market may get difficult in two or three years, but right now I don't think there's a better market um, potentially for someone to, to try to jump in and build a business. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I know a lot of people are nervous about what's going to happen, but interest rates are low, houses are selling and we got to take it while we can get it. I mean, this is a great opportunity for everyone. So yeah. I think I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the challenge and opportunity next year. Yeah, me too. Me too. And so I want, I want to thank you again for, for your trust and your commitment in, in, in me. And, and I'm very honored and excited that you're getting these types of results. Well, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, great material. I appreciate the YouTube videos as I would have never signed up had it not been for some of that information out there. Absolutely. Well, hey, have a great Thanksgiving, Josh. Have a great 2021. And I'm sure we'll talk again in the near future. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one.